Greetings, everybody. This is me, GM Comfortable Gray Sloth. I'm about to show you version 1.4 of my simple world building system, World for Daggerheart. Let's go ahead and log in. I have my own world. This is the trimmed down version for distribution. And you here, have a dagger, heart, beta plate as version 1.4. So what I'm going to show off is how to make a character. I didn't upload and create the templates for this in an effort to make it come up more quickly. So duplicate the player character template, bring it to the canvas, and then we're going to walk through this. I would just show off as much as possible. So we're going to start by choosing a class. This is going to be Katzen Hammer Grudge Beard the fifth. A character I usually use for D&D 5th edition, just transferring her to this world. Choose your class. Druid. She does start as a fighter, but she's a druid first of all. That was fast, right? Druids get Beast Form and Wild Touch. You can see that by opening it up. Alternatively, if you wanted to, these ones are our macros because the druid information is pretty big. I'm not going to be putting it through there like that. That's why I ultimately decided. Next is choose your subclass. And we can see that the druid is going to have either the warden of the elements or the warden of renewal. She's going to be a warden of renewal. Word of Renewal gets Clarity of Nature and Regeneration. Not every subclass is going to have these abilities here, but if it's an activatable thing, I tried to make it its own item. Heritage. Starting with her ancestry, she is a dwarf. I'm going to mention that you can do mixed ancestries here. I'm going to bring a mixed ancestry in over. Let's say that she's half dwarf. I'm going to just delete these parts. Basic idea is you're going to choose two ancestry features. Dwarves have increased fortitude and thick skin. We can see increased fortitude, spend three hope to have damage. Thick skin, you increase your proficiency, increase your minor threshold. So she's gonna have thick skin. There it is, their first one. And what does anybody think her second part is going to be? I'm inclined to say that she's got a little bit of halfling in her, so she's going to be a little bit lucky. I'm going to show off why I did it this way in a moment. Once we catch up, let's have everything aligned. So the mixed ancestry have a, has a special macro that works differently than the other ancestries, which refer to the item in the item tab. This one's going to refer to the item in the character sheet. That took a bit of work to get done. All right, heritage also includes community. It's going to be wildborn. Let's choose her traits. I have a special macro for traits as well as a lot of the other basic parts. It's going to be the freeform sheet trait adjuster. Look at that. And I'm also going to be pulling up the druid. It's going to inform some of these. So she's not going to need a lot of agility. I'm going to make agility the zero. Finesse minus one. Instinct is a big deal for druids, but it's not her primary. So only one, zero, one in presence, two in strength, two zeros, two ones, a negative one, add two. She's going to be beast form focused. Her level is still going to be one. Starting evasion at eight. Proficiency is still one. Minor threshold is one. Major is seven. And severe is 14. And we can look at her. Evasion 8. Thresholds 
minor 1, 7, 14. See, that's so much easier than going through the character sheet like this. Let's pull up the druid sheet again, because we have evasion, thresholds, traits, and hope. That's all figured out. And we'll come back to the backgrounds in a moment. Evasion, like I said, is 8. Thresholds are completed. Hope starts at 2. I have the default in the player character template. Let's put her name in. Cat. Let's pull up an icon for cat using the tokenizer. Core data. Icons. Creatures. Mammals. Let's give her a... No, I'm second thinking that. User data. Systems, D and D five E. Tokens. Heroes. And choose one of these for her. Let's say Druid with a staff. Simple default. You know why not say that? That's a lady druid after all. Actually, I can do this one better. Somebody recently drew Cat for me, which I really appreciate. Shout out to user It's Just Felix on Reddit. I'm going to have to download the image really quickly and put it in for Cat. Can't believe I forgot. So, user data. Go back. I'm just going to put it in here for the sake of speed. There's Cat. Select the file in all her glory. Make it a little more of a earthy. I love her beard. All right, starting weapons. Level one weapons. You're going to have a magical weapon. The dual staff uses instinct. Just going to modify that real fast. And that's what she's going to use. It's going to give her the option of range when she's not in her wild shape form. Beast form, I should say. Excuse me. Next up is armors. I like the gambeson. But I'm going to give her leather because it's simpler. Let's go ahead. Assign me cat. It's going to come pretty soon. Starting inventory. It's a druid. That's anybody. You have the basic supplies, the rope, the torch. And then she's also going to be choosing a strange pendant she found in the dirt. You can put those in later. They're all descriptors. A description. Not going to worry about that. Domains. Sage. I think nature's tongue. And think about Arcana. But I'm going to go with Vicious Entangle instead. In the previous video, you can see how I handled the decks. But for Revity, I'm just going to say we can do it another time. Now the background questions. Once again, open the Druid. Click on Cat. Back experience, Background, and Connection Modifier. Background question one. Two. Three. Connections. And so, why was the community you grew up in so reliant on nature and its creatures? The dwarves of the Grudge Beard Clan eschew more technological dwarven habits and have been increasing 
their reliance on nature and supporting it in kind. What was the first bond you made with a wild animal? Why did it end? Let's say that a uh, cat encountered a wild bear cub but she wasn't aware of the danger of its mother her father Katzen Hammer the fourth had to kill the mother and the cub ran away into the woods leaving cat with a fear and respect for solitude whatever record three who had been trying to hunt you down what do you think they want from you it's tougher to build this character up right there and let's just say that The mountain dwarves believe that Cat's father should have died during his Slayer trial. It's kind of like a Warhammer reference. But he shook off the grudges and so the sins of his actions have caused her to become a target. So she's a dwarf who is hated by dwarves. Her first experience, strength of the mountain, plus two. And then friend of the wild, plus one. And these are stored in the attributes Scroll down, strike the mountain, part of the wild plus one. Wild is a community, dwarves, and this is that. This is more for the freeform, and that way it's actually going to be easy to copy these and put them into the background and connection section later on. It's a short way to do it. At least they're stored, and I found that manipulating the character sheet can sometimes be a little dodgy. So that's done. Experience, name, and pronouns, connections. We don't have a second character, but at least I showed you how that macro works. Now let's actually play. I'm going to go here. I'm going to spawn a skeleton for Cat to tussle with. The first thing she's going to do is use her dual staff. Click on the dual staff. Smack. I'm going to roll instinct. Tez, roll with fear. And look at his difficulty of 12. Simple as that. Now she has hit him. I can click here for the damage. 4 plus 3 is 7. Which hits his major threshold. Which kills him just like that. As a game master, I can choose to go in and adjust his hit points here. I have another macro. Can go in and adjust his hit points here. Look at that. And then when it's run, right click, left click, right click here, and he's dead. What an easy thing to do. Now let's show off some of her abilities. Very proud of this macro, beast form. Click it, and you can change the icons it uses. And she turns into a rabbit to flee. One thing I forgot to do is give her the item, the beast form weapons. So if she wanted to fight, she click, use whatever trait is appropriate for it, and for an Agile Scout, it's agility. Critical success. On a critical success, she recovers a hope, she recovers a strain. Let's show off these macros. So if she had any stress already, I could just decrease it. She should have had two hope, so there she is. And there's on three hope. If she has to use an armor slot, we can use them here. If she takes hit point damage, Fix them here. And you can also use the stat adjuster to change all of those on the fly. These can be positive or negative numbers. You can use each of the traits with advantage. And that's the version 1.4 advantage. 
with Orderborn, if applicable. Got a d20 instead. Ooh, that's a nice roll. If you have both advantage and disadvantage, they cancel out. Same thing with Orderborn. And I records everything in there. Another critical success. Not a thing that happens usually with Orderborn, I don't think. Show off some of these other parts. So I click Beast Form again. She's going to turn back to normal. And I'm going to do Beast Form another time. So that's where she spent her stress is what it is. Another Beast Form to turn into a Pack Predator. You can see it changes her armor. And it gives her a modifier to her strength and her evasion which are represented here strength and I'll make sure to tweak this to have it shown later on this was referring to an old trait use 2 minus 2 it's, it's, it's subtracted that's what's going on easy to fix so you get to see me do my work you can't normally do spells while you're in beast form so she'll cast Wild Touch to part some leaves in her way. She'll cast Clarity of Nature to have a solid rest. I uh, see so you've got Warden of the Elements connected to it. So I'm just going to make sure to modify these appropriately. Regeneration. She can heal somebody. She's a mixed answer to the same before. This refers to her thick skin and little lucky. Wildborn. Nature's Tongue. She roll Instinct. And she failed. So she actually cannot speak to get it out of here. She's vicious and tangle. Instinct. It was also a failed roll. I'm going to equip the armor. See right here? Armor equipped. It's going to set her armor to four. Beast form also works with this. And then Warden of Renewal has the clarity in nature and regeneration right there. So that's the basics. Those are all the features I'm very proud of working it through. We still have the fear and the progress recorders. A lot of the other items have their own macros. This is one from Eskimo. Big shout out to Eskimo as well. Shout out to K2, one of my players in my campaign, for helping me fix this character sheet. I think this is a much more aesthetically pleasing and easy to use one. It, this is based off of what he did. He inspired me, and I think that deserves some praise. But most of all, he helped me input a lot of the data into these and troubleshoot a lot of them. So again, thank you, K2. Thank you for watching. I'm going to be putting this link to anybody who messaged me directly. And this is mostly just a heads up to everybody that I've updated to version 1.4. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.